His work through us in the vineyard surpasses any we could ever imagine. His ways are above our ways. As I think of God's ways being different than our ways, I can't help to think but about our country and how we live out our Catholic faith. In the 1970s, Bishop Fulton Sheen talked about how our country was changing from living in the Christendom era, where economic and social life was based on Christian principles, to living in an apostolic era, which is shaped more by, more by worldly views and is hostile to Christian views. So even though our country was founded on Christian values, in recent years our country's laws or ways, especially on issues like contraception, abortion, immigration, marriage, sexual and gender issues, are different than what the Catholic Church teaches are God's ways. In the 2014 article, A Tale of Two Churches, by the late Cardinal Francis George, he mentions our nation's history and the conflict between the Catholic Church's teachings our country's ways. In this, we see that we are in the apostolic area, era. I'll paraphrase a few points. The history of our country has been to not sanction any specific religion. However, it seems those who consider themselves as progressive and enlightened and influence public opinion in politics, education, communications, and entertainment are using the civil law to impose their own form of morality on everyone. Those who do not conform to their official religion boycott it, cancel, or shut down. For example, some Catholics applying to serve as judges or other, other government positions have been considered by some to be unacceptable and unfit to serve because of their Catholic faith and their membership in the Knights of Columbus. He mentions Throughout history, when Catholics and other believers in revealed religion have been forced to choose between being taught by God or instructed, instructed by politicians, professors, editors of major newspapers, and entertainers, many have opted to go along with the powers that be. This reduces a great tension in their lives, although it also brings with it the worship of a false God. He said, it takes no moral courage to conform to the government or social pressure. It takes a deep faith to swim against the tide. Those who swim against the tide and choose to live by their Catholic faith will be limiting their access to positions of prestige and power in society and possibly their careers. God's ways are not our ways. Our country needs healing in ways politics and legislation can't cure. In our nation's past, when faced with some type of national situation during their presidential terms, Presidents John Adams, James Madison and Abraham Lincoln determined the remedy for whatever it was that ailed our nation at the time was to turn to God, pray, and fast. In the proclamation, President Lincoln said, But we have forgotten God. We have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings are produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power, to confess our national sins, and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. I'd like to mention a few opportunities coming up that will help address our country's need to turn back to God. On Thursday, September 24th, our parish will participate in the National Day of Prayer and Fasting. It's called to prayer and fasting for God's mercy on our land and healing and conversion of our hearts. Sunday, October 4th, I believe there will be the Life Church, where we gather and pray for an end of abortion. On Saturday, October 10th, a couple of parishioners from our parish and St. Anthony got together and are teaming up and inviting the diocese to pray a rosary in the Chapel of the Divine Mercy for our country. For more information on these, look for flyers or see the bulletin on the parish email. In closing, with all that's going on, there's a lot of healing needed. Healing in our church, healing in our nation, and healing in our individual lives. At every hour of the day, Jesus is calling us out of the marketplace and inviting us to labor in his vineyard. He's the vine and we are the branches. When connected to the vine and allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us, it's possible to do things that we could never do on our own. 
Only through Christ and his church can we help heal our country and, more importantly, prepare his kingdom on earth and to save souls. In this time of uncertainty, we need to trust in God and not worry about things we can't control. God's in control. Remember, God's ways are not our ways. They are high above our ways. And as a laborers in the vineyard found out, God gives us not what we deserve. His justice overflows with generosity.